everybody, it's me, Patches, and today I have a, an interview with one of the McMinnville's Museum owners. You're going to like this. This is cool. For all of us uh, paranormal fans, he is too. So check out my video. Always subscribe. Give me a like, thumbs up. Let me know you're out there. See ya. love history more than anything okay where did you move from McMinnville we to just, McMinnville from we just came back to from Arizona from Phoenix Arizona. yeah I got real sweet you, know, you said that this original building was built when in the late 1800s in the late 1800s and it was an original it was, bar it was a, a one of the early saloons of the town when it was built oh cool so uh, do you have any of the stuff from that era here in, you know, some of the saloon stuff or? No, not really. We have some pictures of the man uh, upstairs who built it. Uh, we don't have them on display here, but uh, a woman who was his grandniece came to visit us a few years ago and brought us some photographs of him. We didn't even know what the man looked like who built it. Oh, well, that and is a, awesome. A man with a long white beard. He was a very interesting looking character who built the building. Oh, wow. Uh, next so, time I come down, you got to show me some of those yeah, pictures. Sure. Those are cool. Sure. Like I, I'm always telling people, you can't learn about the future unless you learn about your past. No, no, we're all about well, we're all about the present and future, but we're about the past here as well. Yeah, and you don't know where you're messing up unless no. you learn from your no. past. Absolutely. That's, not. that's one of the things I thought the Civil War taught us, or should have taught us, that uh, yeah, you can't, we're, brothers don't need to be fighting, you know, and most of the time they were relatives. That's stupid war. That's yeah. a tragic war. And all the people that died from that was just... Can you imagine the destruction and... Yeah. I do, uh, like I said, I sometimes I do a little bit of haunted stuff. And one of the people suggested walking down around town and stuff with... And see if I could catch any EVPs. You know, the voice recognition stuff. So I've been, you know, every time we come across some place, you know, I'll stop and, and do something. I, I personally haven't come a car to act with anything like that but you know when you got that much suffering and death it has to leave something behind oh yeah yeah so we don't uh we haven't come in contact with any of that kind of stuff around here yet this building is a very benign building it's it, it has no bad karma in it that we have felt since we've been here we like the building uh, uh, some buildings though you can feel when you go into them. I'm a person who's very sensitive to to the feelings of buildings. Yeah. And so when I go into a building, an old building, uh, my friend Chris that just left going to the library, uh -huh. his family has an old um, uh, log house out in the Shady Rest community. Um, let me see what was that? Oh yes. He, they have that house out in the Shady Rest community. It's been abandoned now for 30-something years. When he took me out there for the first time, mm -hmm. it's, it's set right on the Collins River out there in this beautiful, serene place. And I went in the house. I felt, I felt something very negative in the house. Oh, wow. And I, I could hardly stay in the rooms and come to find out that there were three suicides in that house. Wow. People drinking carbolic acid, of all things, to kill themselves. Can you imagine what oh. a horrible death that would have been? Oh, man, that would dissolve everything in as it this, goes down. In this house. Oh. And so I haven't been back in the house since. Oh, no. i tell you what, I took a picture of my neighbor's house. Because when we lived here before, I knew the little elderly lady that lived in the house and her daughter. And both of them died in the house. And since we was buying the next door neighbors, the next the house next to it, which was the old store, I was taking pictures around. I got a picture of the back of the house. You can see two faces of a little elderly woman you know, with a little bunnet on, and, and a little 
frail. In the photograph that you took? Yep, and you see a little gentleman, a little elderly gentleman, it looks like he doesn't have his teeth in, chewing on something. Really? Uh-huh. One sitting in one window and one sitting in the other. And I showed the neighbor, and the neighbor's like, oh, my God, oh, my God. <laughs> I said, I didn't mean to scare you. I said, they look happy when you look at them. I mean, the faces, they, they look like they're smiling. So I wouldn't be, you know, afraid if they, unless they looked like they was enraged. I wouldn't look like be afraid. You are the only other person here that I've heard that has gotten ghosts in their photographs. Chris has taken several photographs with ghosts in them, and sometimes he gets orbs, perfectly round, white spirit orbs. I got one that, and my grandfather's not here, so I know it, not my grandfather, at one of the graveyards. There's a graveyard that's got beautiful statues and stuff in it. We love going down there because filming the statues and whatnot. I have a picture that looks like an elderly man with a hat holding his hands and like this over one of the graves and when I checked the grave it was an elderly woman and her husband was buried beside her and she was dead before he did. Oh my goodness. So yeah I actually oh. got him looking down over the thing. Another picture I got I'm afraid to look at it because it looks like two witches cackling over a grave. And in that same cemetery? In the same cemetery. And Is that a local cemetery? Yeah, it's a local cemetery. You know the one that has the big ball and, and a cube and it's right down The here. one down off of the uh, yeah. depot bottom? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, and uh, and it, it, it looks like two witches cackling over a grave. And I mean, that, that photograph just scared the snot out of me. I deleted it. It's on my video, but I deleted it because it just scared the snot out of me. That's scary. And, but the other one looked like my grandfather, bending, you know, holding like this over the grave. And, but my grandfather's not here. And then when I went and looked at the grave, the lady had died before her husband. And apparently I caught a residual of the gentleman praying over his oh wife's grave. Oh, my grave. goodness. Wow. So, yeah. You I, we, should definitely pursue those things because you, you sound like you're very uh, in passionate. tune with it all. Yeah, I am. My husband is frightened. He's frightened. It can be frightening. Yeah, and I told him, I said, honestly, I said, I've been in tune since I was a kid. I got an auntie that she can't look at a glass of water without seeing whatever your future is. Really? Uh-huh, and I think it's inherited. I don't work on it because it scares people. Yeah. So, you know, but my, I am in tune. You certainly are. And uh, I, I, I try not to scare folks, and, and most folks are like, mm, so I try not to talk about no. it unless you A lot of tell. people, of course, would be very apprehensive and skeptical and wouldn't believe that you were even telling the truth. But people like me... I do believe what you're saying because I know from experience about things like that. Now, I did catch one EVP. and What is an EVP? An EVP is a voice sound that yeah, okay. comes out of nowhere. Okay. Okay, it's either a, a raspy voice or a, a heavy breathing, uh, a sound that shouldn't be there. You got it in a house? Uh, no, I was, uh, you know where uh, Red Road is? Mm -hmm. You know where the lumber yard mm -hmm. is? You know where they moved the graveyard? I was over mm -hmm. there where the child section was, mm -hmm. and I was talking about how the last time I had hair was here, they hadn't moved all the children's graves yet, and there was vandals going over there and tearing them up, and I was glad they was moving the graves. So I broke out my recorder and decided to do an EVP. And over my back, I, you can hear on the EVP, <sighs> you hear it twice, and then you don't hear it no more. I asked, are you happy that they moved you? And you hear, <sighs> and you hear it twice. Oh my. And I caught it sound on recorder. So, and I don't do anything. I don't run my 
recordings through anything according to what the 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 ghost people that hunt ghosts say that if you can hear it with your ear you should be able to hear it with the recorder yes of course and they said sometimes that will pick up sounds that you can't hear mm -hmm. with your ear mm -hmm. but it should sound normal you mm -hmm. shouldn't have to run it through no. anything no. Or manipulate it in, in any, any way. way so I don't manipulate anything if you see a ghost in a picture it's because it was there I don't manipulate my film I, I might slow it down so you can catch what I'm looking at in fact I got one my husband took me to this lake or a stream Indian stream uh, apparently they had massacred, massacred Indians that lived on that property and uh, we were looking around and I was taking video. Well, if you look at the video, something was chasing our car. Mm-hmm. Scary is not. Something was chasing our car. And was I, that around here? It was on a, a stream, and I can't remember the name in of the, the stream. Area here? In, in the area here. It feeds this lake, this river. It's the beginning of it. It feeds this river. It comes out a little hole in the cave and then swirls down. And uh, yeah, if you if you want to check it out on my YouTube channel, it says I think I got a ghost on video. That's what I put on the name of the video. I think I got a ghost on video, and I'm talking about. We'll the check it. I'll have Chris check it. He does the computer work for us here. Okay. I'll have him check your your uh, Facebook page. Uh, that's a uh, YouTube. YouTube, I mean. Yeah, and okay. uh, you'll see it on there, Slicker and Snot. You can't tell what it is. It At first, I thought, that's got to be a log in a moving car, you know. And then I got the, I slowed it down, and the thing has a face and arms that disappear. Okay, yeah. That's this, scary. Yeah, and I, I told Tim, I said, I didn't feel good when we were there, and so we didn't stay. But I did the video and told Tim, I said, we got to go. I don't feel good. Something's not right here. And that's what's, that's why he gets scary around when I do Absolutely. it. Absolutely. It can be scary. So he says, if you don't mind, I'll stay home when you do those, and I'll help you with the others. So, yeah. I think it's fascinating, to tell you the truth. I'm very fascinated by it. Yeah. Because it opens up another communicating oh, yeah. channel. I mean... Oh, the yeah. world is full of all kinds of spirit and items that we don't normally hear and see with our naked eyes and hear with our ears that some people can actually tap into. Yeah. I ain't like my auntie. Uh, my auntie was like, she couldn't walk into a space without tapping into everything. But then auntie trained herself to do it. She trained herself to do it. Uh -huh. They say that anyone can do it, but I don't think anyone could do it. I think you have to have a pension for it. Yeah, I think it has to be a gift. Yeah, I think and, so. And then you got to exercise yeah. it. And Auntie exercised it from the time she was a kid. She was an only child, so she had nothing but her, what my uncle yes. and Auntie called was her visible friends. That's Absolutely. all she had. Absolutely. So that's all she had. And so she exercised it. When I was growing up, I had my mom and dad leading me all over the place, and they were both past. My father is a pastor, and to him, that's the demons' work. And yes. so I kind of grew up with that situation going on in my life. So I didn't exercise the gift. But after I got away from my parents, I started exercising it here and there and so I can pick up stuff now and again now and I know I pick up enough to know when it's time to get out and when something's friendly well and that's the way it is with me I haven't tried to develop mine either I've frankly been too scared to do I know that it can be dangerous the more you develop it you can develop it to the point that it can be detrimental to you yeah so I haven't done anything but it doesn't mean that I don't have it and I've still got it and I've had it most of my life, too. Yeah. I had a dream. I lived in Washington, D.C. back in the 70s, 60s and 70s. I left here. My parents lived here. I went to Washington, D.C., and one night I dreamed that their house was burning. 
Oh, man. And I woke frightened with flames. It was like so real to me in Washington. And within an hour, I had a phone call from my mother here saying our house burned last night. Oh, man. And I had, I had gleaned that fire. Wow. And there was no mistake in that. That really, I knew then that something was really happening, uh, mm. that I was picking up certain things. And when I went out to this house that I told you about and felt those things in it, I don't try to, I don't even consciously go in them wondering about them, but I go in them and it hits me and so it's it's like a load on me. And Yeah, yeah. I, you, and if you, I had stayed long enough, it could have been, it could have made me sick or I, I guess sometimes it could kill you if you stay in a place where you feel that you shouldn't be. Yeah, that's why I told you. I, once I did my filming, and then I told my husband, I said, we got to go. I said, I'm not feeling good. This is something wrong. Well, I'm wrong. happy to talk with you about this because you're the only other person besides Chris who seems to have photographed these things. When you come back, I'll show you some of his pictures. He found out that he could photograph ghosts. When he was in high school, he went to the Hermitage in Nashville with a class, and he took a picture from the hallway inside what was Rachel, Rachel, uh, uh, Rachel's bedroom. Hmm. And when he got the pictures back, there is Rachel in a nightcap. Wow. And a nightgown standing by the door. Wow. And we have that picture. I'll show you that when you come back. All right, and, cool. And he's still got that picture. That was the first time that he's photographed anything with it in it. Just recently, last week, he, out at this Shady Rest community place that uh -huh. he goes to and photographs out there, he came in and showed me he photographed the house. And it's the first time he's seen orbs on the house. And he's got several photographs with these perfectly, they're like spirit orbs. They're white, perfect round spirit orbs I up get, near the chimney. I got some pictures in Arizona where uh, I took some evening shots, and there are orbs flying all around us. And oh, I'm they not surprised in Arizona. And, and you literally see faces in the orbs. Literally see eyes, mouth. Oh, my goodness. You literally see oh. faces in the orbs. So, yeah. And you can imagine how many was slaughtered there. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. So, well, I'm going to have to get out of here. Right. I got to go to the... Okay, this is... The museum, McMinnville Museum. Man, was really cool. Subscribe, give me a like, give me a comment. These things are very important to me. Thank you.